welcome to episode 50 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting and crochet and making all the things here in East London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. I'm Nikki Hippie on Ravelry and if you search for Tea and Possibilities under the groups tab you will find our group right there. As always, I share quick links to everything I mention in this episode in the box below. And if you would like to see the full show notes that have just a little bit more detail, you can find a link to those just down below as well. As always, I would like to kick off by saying a massive thank you and welcome to any new viewers. I really appreciate you giving the podcast a shot. And to my returning viewers, I would like to say an extra special 50th episode thank you. I know that some of you have been with me from the beginning, some of you have gone back and watched some of those very questionable early episodes, and I am so, so grateful for your support. I really, yeah, I'm just so thankful. Thank you, and um, here's to 50 more, I guess. So yeah, here we are, episode 50. You may have noticed a little change in the credit sequence. That um, has been in the planning stages for a little while, um, it's just one of those things that I've been wanting to freshen up and I thought, you know, episode 50 felt like the best time to do it. And I want to say a really big thank you to my beautiful friend Sean, who did the hand lettering and the drawing um, for my new logo. So thank you Sean. She does actually do custom hand lettering and she does cards and all sorts of things. Um, you can follow her at I underscore drawed underscore it, so I drawed it on Instagram. And I believe she has an Etsy as well, so I will link to both of those just down below. As always, my lovely boyfriend um, animated it all for me and made it look really swish and put it to music and, and did all that for me, so I cannot take credit for that. Um, a massive thank you to him anyway, because without his gear, I would not be video podcasting at all. So yeah, he's very much a good egg and I appreciate him so much. And a lot of what goes on behind the scenes here at Tea and Possibilities has a lot to do with him. So yeah, I just wanted to give him a little bit of a shout out because I probably should every week and I never do. Today's tea is in my trusty Cursed Child mug. Um, it looks, because it's a black mug, it looks a little bit like tar. It's a peppermint tea. Um, I tend to have peppermint tea um, after I've eaten and I have just had lunch. Um, which is why I've got a peppermint tea right now. Um, but obviously black mug, um, no milk in the tea, so it looks a little bit like a polyjuice potion. <laughs> Hopefully I will remain myself throughout this episode. Now before we jump into the podcast proper, last episode I promised you a giveaway in honour of the 50th episode and I asked you to go to a thread in the Ravelry group and to leave me an idea for a top three that you would like to hear about and in return I would use random number generator and the lucky winner would win the latest Selby Mitten Club from Skein Deer Knits and I used random number generator this morning I think I had something like 70 entries which was amazing thank you so much and number four was the winner and that is Mad Laura who is Laura from Canada and thank you so much for entering. If you stick around for Here Be Spoilers, you will get some answers to what you suggested. I will contact Ellie later today and let her know that you're the winner and I will ask her to send that over to you as soon as possible. And thank you to everyone that entered. I really enjoyed reading all your top threes. There were definitely some common themes. So I will make a few notes on those and you know, you'll be hearing about them in the next few weeks. But I know what you're all here for. You are here for the crafty content. So let's move on to Whipped Up. I have a bit of a confession to make. Um, literally nothing that I have to show you today is anything you've seen before. So I know that I promised, you know, uh, to get to work on my sleeve, on my pavement. I think I promised a couple of other things as well that I was gonna finish. Didn't finish anything. So the two projects that I have to show you today, um, they are both living in the same project bag, more or less, which is this little rosy one that Rachel of the Crafty Historian made for me. 
And the reason for that is I'm working on both of them while I'm on the tube, while I'm at work. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of doing a lot of on the go making at the moment. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you though is, I mean, <laughs> this is what I've been working on for two weeks, this single hexagon. Uh, that is not entirely accurate. Um, the first thing I want to show you is this component piece of a much larger project. I am working on a blanket for my lovely friend Katie, who, as I'm sure you all know by now, is expecting a little one very, very soon. I ordered the yarn for this pretty much immediately that I heard, and then it just sat in my cupboard, and I didn't do anything with it for ages. I thought I had so much time and then I lost my mojo and then we had that beautiful baby shower for her and I realised I really did need to crack on and, and get some stuff made and finished. So I have been working like an absolute demon on this blanket. The pattern is Be My Baby by Rebecca Parker. I think it was published in Inside Crochet recently but it's now available on Ravelry and I am using, um, let me see if I've got any in here and I don't, I've only got a little bit of a leftover skein. It is paint box DK um, in cotton, uh, so paint box cotton DK even, um, which I really love. I think the stitch definition is absolutely beautiful on that, really, really lovely. It's very soft, it's going to have a really nice drape and basically it's three colours of hexagons. So I've got this bright yellow and I've got a couple of other colours which I will grab and show you in a minute and I make like a hundred, that seems so much, but quite a lot um, of these little hexagons and stitch them all together. I'm gonna to get some little bees and some little daisies to go on there. And it's just gonna be a really cute little baby blanket. But yeah, I have been pretty much non-stop on these. I, I have two kind of work bags and one of them's a little yellow backpack. And when I've been on the tube and I haven't been able to sit, I've put it on my front and I've opened the flap and I've, I've opened it all up and that's been sat inside, it's kind of on my chest and I've just been crocheting out of the back, out of the backpack. Um, I have had a couple of odd looks. Um, I choose to believe they are, wow, what a cool person and not, what is she doing? Why is she crazy? Um, <laughs> that's how I choose to interpret them. So this is what I've done so far. Um, just by the way, I hate these bags. They're like this kind of like weird, silky type netting and just touching them just makes me feel a bit, ugh. but very, very handy for storing your hexagons in. I have been very good this time. I learned from the crochet baby blanket that I did last year that I don't like weaving in ends at the end. So what I've done is I've crocheted over my ends and I've woven them in um, right at the end and just haven't snipped them off. So I'll do a big snipping frenzy um, later. But that's one colour done. And you know, as you can see, I've got this bright yellow that I'm going to put in as well. And lastly, I've got this really pale grey. Um, it's really nice grey that actually, really isn't it? I like that. But that's um, all three of them together, so that's going to be the body of the blanket and I've got a darker grey to do the bees in and I'll probably do the, the bees with this yellow, this bright yellow. And I think it's going to be really pretty. I'm quite shocked by how many hexagons I managed to um, churn out in a week. That I did in about six days. And I'm about, I'm almost halfway through um, getting all the bright yellow ones done. So I'm over halfway. I have oddly enjoyed just doing the really repetitive task of making these hexagons. I It took a couple of times to get the hang of it and remember the, um, the pattern, but once I had remembered the pattern, it was absolutely fine. I literally um, just, I'll go out into the garden at lunchtime and I'll just whip up a couple. I think one takes me 20 minutes max, so that's pretty good going. Um, I do it while I'm watching the TV. Like I said, it's really good for the commute. Um, a couple of times we've had some IT problems at work, so I've gone, well, can't do anything, you know, work-wise, because literally everything is on the computer. 
So I'll just sit and you know take advantage of that downtime and crochet another hexagon. So it's going quite quickly. I'm hoping I can get it done before um, the baby arrives. So uh, wish me luck. I was planning not to share this with you. I think I told you that back when I showed you the yarn months ago. Um, but if I hadn't showed you that, there'd be nothing to show you for the next couple of weeks because I am going to try and be a bit laser focused and just work, you know, on this and other things because I like, you know, having options. Um, but I think it would be really good to just work on it, get it out. I can do this. I can finish something. Yes, I can. The second project that I want to share with you um, this week is also for Katie. So basically, um, Katie can't watch pretty much any of Whipped Up this week. So just, I hope she skipped straight to here be spoilers because it's probably easier. Um, this little thing is, I mean, it's supposed to be a baby hat. It doesn't massively look like a baby hat at the moment, um, but I assure you it is. Um, I'm magic looping it just because I did go through a period of only wanting to knit hats on short circulars, but I don't have the space to have every short circular that I need, and it's much easier because I've got an interchangeable chow goo set just to have magic loop to hand. So that's going really well. I'm knitting the Harvest Bounty Hat by Vicky Bird Designs, and this, in case you can't tell by the colour, I'll just stretch it out so you can see the slight texture is gonna be a little pumpkin hat. So I don't know if you can see there, but it's uh, it's got like a little pearl, um, it's got quite wide, wide ribs, I should say, um, to make the kind of pumpkin-y, like bumpy outside. You know what I mean, it's gonna look like a pumpkin. And I have got this lovely dark green, and that's going to make the little stalk and the leaves and things on the top. Um, so it's going to be a little pumpkin hat, which I think is going to be adorable. And even better, this is, oh dear, look, I've been carrying this green around and it's just making a mess of everything at the moment. But this is Debbie Bliss Rialto DK. I don't think it says what colour on here, which is a bit frustrating. But it arrived and I just thought, gosh, that's really nice. I've never really used any Debbie Bliss yarns. Um, I don't know why, I just never have. And it arrived and I thought, gosh, that's squishy and delicious. And then I started knitting with it. And this is knitting up. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's just gorgeous. Um, it is an extra fine merino wool superwash. So hopefully, you know, it'd be stand up to babies. I mean, I don't know how much bad things can happen to a baby's hat, but I don't really know any babies. So there you go. Hopefully this will be fine. Um, but yeah, it knits up like an absolute dream. The stitch definition is beautiful. It feels so soft. It's got that kind of almost squishy sponginess that I really like. And I'm thinking, you know, next time I'm in the market for a sweater quantity, I might get a sweater quantity, quantity even, of um, Demi Bliss Rialto DK. So yeah, it's kind of all very baby here at the moment, um, which is odd because it's not my baby. <laughs> like, I'm not having a baby and it's all baby knits all the time here. And I'm crochet and crochet and all new cast ons. And I think maybe I needed that because I've not been able to put like my crochet and my knitting down this week. I knew that I needed to cast on the pumpkin hat um, and I knew that I wanted to do it before this podcast so I could include it on the podcast so it wasn't just, I'm just working on a blanket, sorry guys. Um, but it was really hard to put down my crochet because I was really enjoying it and I had that real sense of achievement every time I finished one because they only take about 20 minutes. There's a thing of like, one more down, go down, go, and you feel like a commando, um, which is great, I don't often feel like a commando with my knitting, but I am, I am plowing through, I feel laser focused, and it is, it's just fantastic, I love it so much, so yeah, I think I've got my mojo back, guys, I did want to cast on Rich's sock, so I would have one more thing to share with you this week, but frankly, I didn't want to put down the squishy, lovely Debbie Bliss pumpkin hat, so, that is all I've been working on. 
I think now you've seen the pile of hexagons, you're not going to wonder what I've been doing with my time because that's quite a big pile. But um, there is something else I wanted to share with you. Once upon a time, I was going to Edinburgh for the first time. I was going for the Fringe Festival. I was at uni. I was a drama student, so obviously I was going to the Fringe. And my nan knit me a hat to go because despite it being August, my nan said, it's Scotland. It's going to be cold. You're going to need a hat. And I must have been 20. I think I was 20. Um, and I wore that hat non-stop. It was just the best thing ever. And then I realised I'd left it on a bus. I must have been about 25. So I had it for a good five years and then I, I think I left it on a bus. I think it, you know, it fell out of my bag or something. Um, and I lost it and I was so upset about it. So my nan went to the same shop where she got the yarn originally, got the yarn and re-knit me one. And I had that one ever since, and I'm now 31. So I have had um, that hat for about six years, and in total I've worn the same grey hat for like 10 years, <laughs> which is ridiculous, but I really like it, it's a really good hat. And a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, a little while ago, I decided to meet up with some friends who had gone to see Britney Spears <laughs> at the O2 and we had a little bit of a night out and we went dancing and it was great fun and I thought you know what I'm going to do, it's, I'm not going to take a coat because it's too warm for that, I'm going to put my hat on, I'm going to wear my hat because if your head's warm, you know, when you're waiting for the night bus home or whatever, um, that's, you know, if your head's warm you feel a lot more cosy and I had it the whole night tucked into my handbag, it, I deliberately put it at the bottom of my handbag so it would be safe. Clearly not safe enough because when I got home I realised it was no longer in my handbag, um, which I was absolutely devastated about because I feel quite bad for having lost my hat again. Um, I think what must have happened is I've gone to pull out my purse and it's got caught and has just kind of flown out without me noticing. I did call up um, a couple of the places we'd been to, no one had handed it in. So I decided to come clean to my nan and say, look, I am so sorry, I really do appreciate you knitting it for me, and I should have taken better care of it, and I'm so sorry. And my nan was like, well, you're more upset about this than me. You've been wearing that thing for years, you need a new hat. So we started talking about um, making me a new hat. Now I could knit my own, but there's something quite nice about having a nun knitted hat, I think. And she came up with all these ideas. She was like, you know, maybe we could do a different pattern um, or we could do different color. How do you feel about green? Do you like blue? And I was like, I mean, I like the gray hat. So yes, <laughs> for the third time, my poor grandmother is going to knit me this same gray hat. No new pattern, no new yarn. Um, it just, I just want my grey hat back guys, I love wearing that thing, I just want a replacement. And unfortunately the yarn that she used is no longer available, it's been discontinued. And the lovely Amy is stranded when I kind of wailed at her that I couldn't find this yarn and what was I going to do, um, so we'll just look on a Ravelry D stash. And unfortunately a lot of the yarn was available but not in the grey. So I had a look on eBay and I never shop on eBay because I find it quite busy to use and I like things to be a lot more clean and structured and easy. But I found my yarn. Ta-da! Um, it's not anything fancy. It is Serdar Escape Wool Rich DK. I think it's a wool acrylic blend. Yes, it is. It's 51% wool, 49% acrylic. And it's kind of a... Uh, like a variegated um, grey, so it goes from this like stripy white grey down to a much lighter grey, there's darker chunks. So when it knits that up, it's not just a plain grey hat, it's actually quite, you know, fun looking. I mean, I say fun. At the end of the day, it's a grey hat, but the reason I like it is because it goes with everything. It's a fantastic neutral, it goes with 
my cute little dresses when I'm going out on the town and it goes with my coat when it's winter and that's why I love it and I could have had a bright green one or a pink one or a blue one but I wanted my grey hat and I just wanted to share that with you because I know it's a bit bonkers and a bit weird maybe but you're knitters so I'm sure if anyone's going to understand it's you guys why it was important to me to replace something that felt very special and why I'm not just knitting it for myself you know I, I want my nan to knit it for me I want my nan hat back so yeah that's all I've been working on and stashing and thinking about um, knit and crochet wise uh, the past couple of weeks so now let's move on to here be spoilers <laughs> Laura, who won the giveaway at the top of the episode, um, had a few suggestions for top threes. I think one of them was top three sweater or shawl patterns or sock patterns, I think it was. Uh, top three yarn dyers. Um, and I'm not going to do those ones. I'm going to chicken out a little bit because I know that if I start browsing my queue to pull out the top three sweater patterns or socks or shawls, I'm very quickly going to lose hours of my life just searching for patterns and enjoying patterns and I know what I'm like and I will not be able to choose three. As soon as I'm editing I'll listen to myself saying oh I like this one and this one and this one going I can't believe you left out that one like that was a terrible mistake you should have chosen these three instead. I know what I'm like <laughs> and the same for yarn dyers I just I like too many to pick. Now when Laura asked for my favourite, uh, my top three podcasts, she did say audio or YouTube. Um, I, you know, haven't done this on purpose at all, but when I was thinking about it, I realised that there's a very definite split between how I, um, how I engage with podcasts. The YouTube ones that I love tend to be knitting, and the audio ones that I love tend not to be knitting. So I thought that I would share my favourite audio podcasts um, just because they're different. They're a bit different to knitting. Um, it kind of shows the other things I'm interested in. And yeah, I just thought it was quite interesting because I hadn't really thought about it before. But yes, most of the things that I watch on YouTube are about knitting um, because it, it feels like a natural home for it because it's quite visual and you want to see things. And the rest of them that I listen to are fantastic for when I run, um, when I'm commuting, when I'm just, when I'm cleaning or washing up. I love having a podcast going. Before I dive in though, I want to give two very special mentions. Um, these are not going to be in my top three, but I wanted to mention them because I love them so much. And that is The Pomcast by Pom Pom Quarterly and The Knit More Girls. You will definitely have heard of these audio podcasts. They are the only two knitting podcasts that I listen to um, that aren't on YouTube. And there's a lot of reasons for that. The first is that I think the Knit More Girls was only the second knitting podcast I got into. I started, as I think a lot of us did, with Cast On by Brenda Dane. And I still really enjoy um, Cast On. I still go back and visit the archives because it's a beautifully produced podcast and it's just really lovely to listen to. So I've been listening to Jasmine and Gigi for about six years now. So even though a few other ones that I listen to that I've gradually stopped listening to, um, for some reason I just really enjoy catching up with them. And a lot of the time, you know, I'll let their podcast build up over the month or so and then I'll have a bit of a binge. Um, I was actually having a binge today while doing some cleaning and I just really love it. Um, it's great. They have a massive back catalogue, they've been doing this for 10 years. So there's always something to listen to. Pom Pom is fantastic, um, it's a monthly podcast so I never really fall behind on it and it's really lovely to hear from the team behind Pom Pom Quarterly because I waxed lyrical about them last week. Their most recent issue is stunning and just, oh, it's just even better than I thought it was going to be. And they always have really interesting interviews, um, just really fascinating people that they talk to and they're just, they're just great people. And they were the actual um, people who inspired me to do top threes for a little while there because their top threes are always really fun. 
So before I get stuck into my top three, I just wanted to give those two a special mention because they're fantastic. So now my top three. First of all, I'm gonna say, this is not in any particular order. <laughs> it was hard enough narrowing it down to my favorite three, let alone ranking them. So I'm just gonna tell you what they are <laughs> and I'm not favoring any over another one. I'm just, just gonna, this is just the order I happen to write them down in. First up, and it will probably come to no surprise to anybody who has been following me on Instagram recently or who has tuned in to some of the more recent podcasts, it is The Rex Factor. I love The Rex Factor. It's fantastic. I discovered this earlier this year, I think. I was looking for a new history podcast um, that was particularly dealing with the mystery of the princes in the tower, which is how I found Rex Factor. And I listened to the Princes in the Tower episode and the Richard III episode, enjoyed it so much, I decided to go back to the beginning and start again. The premise of the show is that they review every monarch from Alfred the Great to Elizabeth II. And every episode, they'll give you like a little bit of biography, they'll tell you about that person, give you kind of an overview of their life, and then they um, review them using factors, um, which is battliness, um, scandal, dynasty, longevity, and at the then at the end, they decide, did this monarch have the Rex Factor? I've actually just finished listening to the English Kings and Queens. I listened to all the playoffs because at the end they had um, a group of Rex Factor winners and they pitted them against each other so they would have ultimate Rex Factor. I was quite happy with the result, but I'm not going to say who won. So I'm just about to start um, their second series, which is the Scottish Kings and Queens. I believe it's finished now, um, I'll have to have a scroll through and see, and I believe they're about to start the consorts, they're going to go back um, to the English monarchs and look particularly at their, their consorts, so the queens and occasional kings of, of England, although they wouldn't be kings would they, because a king outranks a queen, so Prince Philip, the Dukes of Edinburgh basically. <laughs> I am very excited for that because I think a lot of the time the consorts get forgotten and there are amazing characters like Eleanor of Aquitaine that I am dying to know more about. Margaret of Anjou is one of my favourites to hear about, I think she's fantastic and I don't think the, the women get as much credit as they should get. And I say women because um, the monarchy of England has more or less been men. So on the whole that is going to be... Um, a series about, about women, which is fantastic because up till now it has been very male dominated. The reason why I like this podcast, um, there are many reasons. I, I love the hosts, Graham and Ali are fantastic. I probably have a little bit of like a brain crush on them because I just think they're awesome. And so they, they come across in a really lovely way. It's really fun to listen to. It's not dry. Um, you know, they, they'll discuss and debate things, yes, but they'll also pull out some of the more ridiculous elements or the funny elements, uh, which I really appreciate because I'm not studying history. Um, I didn't take history at degree level, I took A-level history, um, and that's as far as I took it. So I'm not here to, like, learn something for an essay or a dissertation. Um, I'm here because I'm genuinely interested and I want to I wanna hear more, I want to hear all these juicy details. So I think they have a really good balance between um, not being too serious, that it's kind of almost too dry, um, and not taking the mickey too much. They've got a really good middle ground, and I, I really appreciate that. They have also started an animated series. I watched it on YouTube on one of my lunch breaks. It was Richard III. I say series, I don't know if this is like the pilot episode and they're hoping to use that to, to pitch and launch a series later or if there will be more coming. Um, I haven't actually listened to the episodes about the animated series because I'm a little bit funny about listening ahead instead of in order. <laughs> so I probably won't listen to those till I've actually come to them. Uh, which is just one of my funny little quirks. I like to listen to things in order and not pick up like later announcements. I don't know why, that's just how I like it. So yeah, if you like history, um, particularly um, British history, 
definitely um, tune in, it's really, really interesting. Next up, and again, if you've been following me on Instagram, you will not be surprised to hear that it's Harry Potter and the Sacred Text. I binged on that um, and Rex Factor kind of concurrently, and I'm now fully caught up with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text, and I'm reading and listening along to Order of the Phoenix. The idea behind the podcast is that any book you love can be sacred. Um, the idea of sacred meaning that you can take lessons from it, that it can provide you comfort. The kind of things that if you are a religious person, you take from the Bible. You can, if you are a non-religious person, or even if you are a religious person, you can find it elsewhere. And on that understanding, they are reading Harry Potter chapter by chapter and discussing it with that kind of sacred view in mind. What can we learn from this chapter? How can we use it to better ourselves? Um, how can we use it to look at society in a different and more kind way? And I think that is fairly radical, actually. I think that love is one of the most radical acts in the world and the fact that they're using something um, like the Harry Potter books as a vehicle for that is fantastic. How they do it is they, as I say, they read a chapter every week, but they read it with a theme. So um, they might read a chapter through the theme of commitment or family or friendship or despair or betrayal. And they will read that. And by having this theme, it allows them to dig a little bit deeper and not just see the surface of like, what, what is this chapter about? Casper and Vanessa, who are the hosts, are really, really lovely. They are incredibly earnest people. They are funny, it is funny sometimes. Um, and I don't, you know, I really enjoy that because again, I like that nice balance between being interesting and like the serious elements and also the humor. That is what really grabs me. And they are, as I say, they're both incredibly respectful um, of both the source material and the fact that they're calling it a sacred text. And I know that there will be some people who think that you shouldn't really look at non-religious books in a sacred way. But um, for me, I would say maybe have a listen to a couple of episodes because they're definitely not taking the mickey. They are, as I say, being incredibly respectful. And for me, um, I'm not um, a person with any kind of practicing religion. It was, it was a really a beautiful realization that just because I don't have that a religious belief doesn't mean that I can't draw a similar comfort from something that I love. And I have taken a lot of lessons from this podcast. I, I believe I've saved them in a highlight on Instagram, but I've saved kind of my favorite quotes um, on Instagram because some of it's really powerful. A lot of the time when I listen to this podcast, um, I do stop and kind of have to pause it and take in what they've said, which I think is fantastic. I think, that, you know, that's great. I'm getting even more out of it now. I caught up um, with the Goblet of Fire. I actually went to see the last um, chapter live. Uh, it was in Euston. It was a fantastic experience. I got chatting to some lovely people. It was great. And... I'm now fully up to date, so I'm actually reading a chapter and listening along every week and I'm actually getting a lot more out of it and I'm able to engage more in discussions with people uh, about it. Yeah, as you can no doubt tell, I'm really enjoying this experience, so I really recommend that you go and go and have a listen. Also, it's worth noting that they have recently um, put up a post about their financial struggle. They have been using, I believe it was Panoply, in order to get advertising to keep the podcast going because it does cost money. Um, and Panoply, I think, are dissolving or are no longer offering advertisements. So the team behind it are looking for donations and they are looking for Patreon subscribers. So um, if you go and find it and you love it, or if you're you know, an ongoing listener and you haven't heard this update, if you do, if you are able to share a little bit, if you're able to become a Patreon subscriber, if you're able to donate something, please do, because I think the work they do is, is fantastic and really, it's good work. You know, it's, it's a joy to listen to and it's like become a little bit of a hobby of mine, but that doesn't negate its power. My final um, top podcast, audio podcast, is the London Girls podcast. 
Before I talk about this, I have to share a bias. Um, I actually know both the girls um, who do this podcast, and one of them is actually a very close friend of mine. She's actually the lady whose little one I crocheted a blanket for last year. And this podcast, I will say, is fairly intermittent. Um, they're two incredibly busy women work, living and working in London. As I say, my friend has, you know, had a child not so long ago. So they haven't updated particularly recently. I, I hear on the grapevine they will be soon, though. So the podcast is actually about the experience of black women in Britain today. And it is incredibly interesting. You know, these are very creative, talented women um, who work in creative industries in one way or another. They engage with art in the world. They go to exhibitions. They talk about politics. And it's fascinating because for me, um, I, am, I, I come from a place of white privilege. I am a white woman um, living in London. And my experience of this city and this culture that I exist within is very, very different to theirs. And that's why I really enjoy listening to it, because um, as, as, I guess there's a bit of a theme in my top three in that I don't like to engage with things that tell me things I already know. Um, I absolutely have favourite films that I will watch over and over again because their very familiarity is reassuring in some way um, but on the whole I really enjoy engaging with things that are going to tell me about a different experience. I don't massively love only consuming things about white women in London because I know what that's like, I live it. <laughs> so it's incredibly interesting for me to have a podcast that is devoted to sharing a personal experience that is different to my own and Beyond that, there is no massive theme to the podcast. It's not like, you know, you come here and you know you're going to get knitting. And sometimes you'll get this. Sometimes you'll get talk about media and some, you know, whatever else I talk about in Knit and Natter. But the great thing about what um, Janice and Zainab, who I should have mentioned by name earlier, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, the great thing about what they do is that they talk about a breadth of experience and it's fantastic. So, you know, I will find new music through them, new exhibitions. Um, they will talk about politics in a way that will make me kind of, as I do with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text, kind of pause and go, well, I need to digest that. I need to think about that. And as I said, I am biased because I do know them to be um, fiercely intelligent and articulate women. Um, but I have no reservations at all recommending it. Um, there's not a massive back catalogue so you can listen to all of it and they're just they're lovely they're funny they're insightful and they give me something to think about every time which I really appreciate so there you go those are my top three audio podcasts I really enjoyed sharing that I would love to hear about your favorite audio podcasts I as I said, I love having them on when I'm cleaning, when I'm running errands, when I'm running, <laughs> um, when I'm commuting. They're fantastic. They're kind of the, the background to my day to a certain extent. And I'm always on the lookout for new and juicy ones to enjoy. So if there's anything out there that's history, I love history, um, society, anything about experiences, as I said, that are different to mine, I'm always mad keen to hear about it so yeah do let me know your recommendations but now let's move on to knit and natter wow <laughs> it has been a while since i've had more than two segments in the podcast so i am hoping this isn't going to go on too long and if it does i'm really sorry um, but just as a heads up for anyone um, who prefers the knitting content um, I won't be talking any more about knitting, um, that was very much this week just for whipped up. So today I will be sharing a little bit about my new job. Um, so if that's not anything you're interested in, that's absolutely fine. I will hopefully see you next episode. But if you are sticking around, I mentioned last episode that somebody had asked what I was doing for a job now. And I hadn't really talked about it because I didn't think there'd be any interest. But I did have a few people say they'd be very keen to hear what what I'm doing now. I'm not going to go into a mad amount of detail, um, but I did want to talk to you about it a little bit because 
I am enjoying it. It's it's been really fun. This last couple of weeks have been a bit crazy. Um, but yeah, so basically what I'm doing now, I left Love Knitting at the beginning of March, end of February. The last couple of days of February, early March, I left Love Knitting and I have been working for a charity. And it's a very new charity. It started at the end of last year and is focused on the centenary commemorations for the end of World War I. And obviously that's quite a good fit for me for various reasons. I love history um, and actually one of the bits of the job that I love most is the fact that I get to read about history and talk about history and that's pretty awesome in my book. The charity that I work for is a military charity and we have three main aims. Um, the first one is to commemorate World War One. Second is to educate children and younger generations today about that war because it's not widely taught um, in schools. I think at school I did maybe one term on it um, and we want to teach more about that war because it has an incredible legacy that we are still living with today and you know we want to make sure that they're aware of the futility of war. Finally we want to heal so we um, raise money to donate to other charities who work with veterans today to help them transition back into civilian life um, because that can be difficult and there can often be you know issues with PTSD, there can be some physical injuries, all of which make that more difficult for them. And we do that in a variety of ways. We are currently um, selling World War One commemorative um, figures. Uh, the idea being that you can purchase a figure to remember an ancestor because we're encouraging people to find out about their own family tree and their family history to see if there is anything related to World War One there, as we think most families will have. And the money raised from that goes to help veterans today. So there's there's quite a nice balance there. I really enjoy it for a number of reasons. I, you know, get to talk about history all day long, which is fantastic. And I really like feeling that we are doing good in the world. I've met some veterans um, who have been helped by the charities we're supporting and that there is, you know, selfishly, there is there is a good feeling to be had from, from knowing the work you do every day is actually directly helping other people. What do I do there? I, um, technically I run the social media channels, so I take care of Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. However, it's a very small charity and we are a very small team, so we all do pitch in a lot. So I have helped with the educational resources, I'm currently hosting a podcast, um, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, I'm working on the production side of getting some films made, I'm running some design stuff that needs doing, um, so it's very very busy. Um, November is the kind of remembrance period, the 11th of November will mark 100 years since the end of the First World War. So it's an incredibly busy time at the moment and the past couple of weeks especially have felt manic. Um, and yes, it's been stressful because there's a lot to do, but what I really loved is that it's never felt bad stressful. But yes, we have started a podcast, which is something that um, I'm spending a lot of time on at the moment. And the idea is we will be chatting to the charities that we will be donating our profits to. Um, to talk more about what they're doing and you know what their programs offer veterans um, you know today and we are also talking with a variety of people about World War One itself so um, we've recently talked to a guy from Empire Faith and War who talked about the Sikh contribution to World War One which is largely unknown today. So we're trying to find out more about the sheer diversity um, of World War One because it was a world war and I think that when you say World War One or First World War people immediately imagine a very European war, you know, the trenches in France and I don't think people necessarily think about the fact that 
you know, they were fighting in Africa, they were fighting in China, um, there were battles across the world, it literally was a global war. So that's kind of what we're trying to highlight with the podcast, we're trying to find um, largely unknown um, areas of the war and, and talk more about them. They're fairly short podcasts, um, but the idea is to kind of wet your whistle a little bit and, and get you intrigued enough to go and find out more, mainly to find out more um, within your own family. And it has been such a joy to do this. Um, this is an idea that we had about a month ago and we've already put out the second podcast and we've got, I think, another three recorded and we're still working on getting more recorded. And it has just been, there have been times when I've had to pinch myself because I'll be sat there talking to someone fascinating and, you know, I'm doing this for a podcast for work and I get paid to do this. And it's just so interesting. And I feel like I'm learning a lot. Um, you know, I went into this job knowing about the fact that there were battles across the world, but I'm learning so much more. Like I've, I had a very much a surface knowledge and I'm learning so much. And oh, I just, I, I just love that. And I'm really looking forward to being actively involved in our projects for next year, because obviously next year um, we'll be looking at the Second World War um, and just continuing to raise awareness um, because I, I do think, I have a great love of history as, as you now know from you know the things that I enjoy doing outside of work. So yeah, that's a little bit about what I'm doing. Um, as you can tell, I'm, I'm enjoying it very, very much. I pinch myself that I get to do something that I really enjoy, that I find so interesting and that also actually has a positive impact in the world. And I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to do that. So that's it for this week. Um, I hope that was interesting. <laughs> I'm telling you a little bit about my job. Um, I've just picked up my cup of tea because usually I've got like a third of it left at this point and um, I enjoy finishing it while I say goodbye to you. But no, no, I'm completely out. I've blathered on for so long today that I am completely out of tea. And I hope I haven't blathered on and made this like an hour and a half podcast. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but, you know, if you're not going to blather on on your 50th, when are you? I will see you very soon, uh, probably in a couple of weeks. And until then, I hope you have a lovely couple of weeks. And I will see you very soon for another cup of tea. Bye. I've rolled up my sleeves because it's actually really warm today. And I put on my lovely um, autumn chenille jumper because I wanted to be cosy at home. And it's actually a lot warmer than I thought it was. So... I'm dedicated to it being autumn though, so I'm only rolling up my sleeves and I'm not taking my jumper off.